Yeah, hi everyone. Jason here, Robot Law Miles Australia. About a month or so back, uh, a little bit longer, I'm not sure, about a month ago, um, I posted a video, uh, this one here, I'll just put it on the screen here for you, um, uh, which just showed how Luba 2 worked, um, uh, particularly when it had no satellite signal and how the charging station worked when it was outside of, of satellite signal uh, and how the robot mapped. Um, as it turns out, I put a couple of things in that video that were completely incorrect at the time, so we're going to correct those in this video today. Uh, the first one, pretty simple one, um, but uh, in the video there I made a comment there that when you map uh, Luba 2 with no satellite signal um, you couldn't start and finish uh, the map with no satellite signal and it failed to actually save the map. Um, that had absolutely nothing to do with the satellite signal. Uh, that was simply because the map was actually too small. So um, I'll show that on the, on, the, um, on the screen here now for you. So where we actually uh, set this robot up like this, um, it had the little area um, on the ground there. Um, the area was just too small. Um, had I made that area uh, a, a few square meters larger, then that map would have saved perfectly okay. So there is no issues with starting and stopping uh, any map saved uh, with no GNS signal to Luba. It will work perfectly fine uh, to save, to start and finish uh, that map uh, as long as the map area is big enough. Mm. So that was a simple one. Um, but the more important one was having the charging station um, in located in a, in a spot where there was no GNS signal. Um, now, at the time um, of me putting this, po this video up, um, it was completely incorrect. Um, well, partially incorrect, I suppose is more the point. The Luba could absolutely do what I said it could as we mapped it, we mapped it in there. And again, I'll put this on the, on the screen here now so you can see what we actually did. We had the charging station in the back of the garage here at the shop uh, and we were able to actually set up a map uh, outside uh, on the car, in the car park there where it could go out uh, and do a mowing session in the car park where it had satellite signal uh, and then it could return back to the charging station no problems at all um, as long as the camera distance uh, while traveling on a channel uh, for, for no GNS signal um, it didn't exceed 25 meters so it could travel you know, it could basically could travel 12 meters in get on the charging station and then it could travel 12 meters out and go back out and mow without any problems whatsoever and it absolutely could do that no problems at all um, but what we found out afterwards with a couple of people who actually commented on the video actually which is great that we uh, got some comments there to to correct uh, what i had there at the time the robot could do that but after about an hour or two of sitting on the charging station the little icon uh, that shows the meterage uh, that the countdown on the meterage i'll put it on the screen here for you that little icon there it would disappear after about an hour or two. Uh, essentially that icon would just go away. And when that icon went away, um, you could no longer send the robot out. So it would go back, go out and do its work, come back and charge, uh, and about an hour or two later, you go back out there and try and send the robot out to work again. Um, and it couldn't do it. It just it would just say there was no positioning because the, the, um, the robot no longer really remembered that it was actually on the charger or where the, what the location of the charger was. And, however, after a few firmware updates, um, and we're now talking about firmware version that ends in 414 uh, for Luba 2, which is, uh, the, there was an actual hot fix that dropped today about that actually. Um, it now does do what we said it was going to do. However, it's not quite the same. So I'll throw you over to a video that I took this morning showing you exactly what it does do. Okay, so here we are back in the uh, the back of our garage here. Going outside, it's still a bit dark outside, very fairly early in the morning at the moment. Um, uh, Lube has been sitting here all night. Um, uh, we I installed him here yesterday, and we did a bit of testing yesterday on him uh, with a little mapped area, as you can see on the screen. Uh, there's a small mapped area out on the concrete out here in the car park. Uh, Lube comes through through here and uh, docks up onto the charging station here, no problems at all. And just like in the last video, we're able to set that up, no problems at all uh, in regards to setting up the area, the pathway and the location of the base station. The Luba will come and go uh, as required. But the question has always been what happens overnight and then the following day. So he's now been sitting there overnight. Um, now you will notice on the screen now that the uh, so I might just go back a page for a start. So just on the on the sort of middle to the bottom there, uh, so it's middle to the left there where it's got uh, ready. Now I'll just circle that, I'll put a screen up there for the circle. Um, 
that is what you're really looking for basically that Lubra is ready now if it's too dark uh, around the camera and the camera system can't work um, that, that will say positioning because Lubra will have no position from the uh, from the satellites and it'll have no position for the camera so it just won't work at all if that says positioning uh, then there's no way that robot's going to move from the base station it'll just come off the charging station it'll come off to about here somewhere and just stop and just say it can't move anymore so what you're looking for uh, is that little green tick and the ready on the left hand side there and then up the top there you'll see underneath the camera icon it now says zero meters now that's because essentially it's got dark so previously when it docked onto the onto the charging station it had 22 and a half meters or something like that left on it and um, as soon as it goes dark uh, then that resets to zero um, once when the light comes back on again so we're going to hit play now and we're going to see how he how it goes out so hit play um, and we'll say start mowing and continue so he'll continue on no problems at all and you'll see on the top of the uh, the camera icon there now it actually started at five meters so it gave Luba five meters in this circumstance uh, to be able to get out to where he can actually pick up satellites and just by coincidence here at the moment uh, five meters is exactly what he needs you'll see it's counting down to 1.8 meters now He'll get just over the edge here to where it actually runs down to zero meters and he, got, he just got his position back there now and off he goes into the dark and we'll start mowing uh, the area using the satellite positioning system. So I'll pause him there and we'll end the task. Which might just sense him. I'll, charge, I'll return him back to the charge station because what we want to do is I'm going to relocate the charging station now further into the back uh, to see if it still only provides five meters or whether it provides more i believe it will only provide five meters but we have to test that to find out and before we do that i'll just show you um, uh, how the uh, how it changes that positioning when it gets dark so we'll let him dock up he should just lose his camera position now there he is now so now he's saying yeah so he's got 24.5 meters to go Oh, he just got his position back again for a second. <laughs> That's unusual. Let him turn around. You see he can now actually handle having a bump on, the, on his way back to the charging station, which is great. Mm. Let him charge up. He's counting here, he's got 24.3, so he's gonna have about sort of, you know, 23.8 meters or so left by the time he's on the charger, which is still quite a bit. Mm. Start charging. Okay, so, like I said, you can see on the top there, he's now got exactly 23 metres uh, of, of, of travel left while using his camera vision. So, if if you were you know, to have your charging station quite a long way out, then as long as there's light, he will quite happily relay or happily travel around about 12 meters into the charging station and then 12 meters out because on a channel he'll only travel with his camera vision for 25 meters in total uh, and that is in and out so you can only get a, around about 12 meters is the maximum you could get if that area maintains light all the time it's, if it gets dark at any point then the camera will reset and then that the uh, then the, the meterage will reset back down to zero so and i'll just demonstrate that now so I'll just put a uh, put a tail over the camera there like such and you'll see within a few seconds there you go so the position's dropped out and you can see that again on that uh, on the middle to the left there it now says positioning because it's got no camera vision and it's got no satellite position so I'll take that tail back off again and again within a few seconds he's gone back up to so he's reset to zero so that's what happens overnight it just resets to zero and then when we go to start again, it'll obviously give us that five meter and I'll just very quick put him out there and if he goes, it's starting to count down from five. Stop okay, so I'm gonna move the charging station further away and see if it still only gives us five meters. Back in a second. Okay, okay so we've set up the, uh, the charging station now. All the way down back through here. So it's now another five meters further away than it was before from the opening out the door. The robot's just making its way back to the charger. I did actually move the charging station. It was actually across over the side there a little bit just before. 
So that's why it docked in that way. So let it dock up so you can see exactly what the uh, what the uh, the app says. As you see, obviously it's counting down now. It's down to 17.4, so it's going to be down to about 17 metres by the time it gets on the charger. Okay, so that's 16.8 metres left uh, on the, the pathway on the channel there now. So if you if the light conditions stayed light all the time, uh, then you could quite easily send that robot uh, out from this distance, no problems at all. And I've already done that actually prior to starting the starting the uh, starting this camera up. Mm -hmm. So I'll do the same thing as before, and we'll just cover over the uh, over the camera, so you can see that now the. Uh, the camera position's gone away. Take the light back off, take it off again, and you can see the camera has set back to, uh, to zero uh, meters. Now, same as before, if we want to mow now, we can go out and we can hit mow. However, Stop you'll see that it still starts at five meters. So it's counting down for five meters. Hopefully, oh, don't hit the wall. Oh, I did, it hit the wall. It's gonna stop now. Because it can't handle having a bump on, on its way out. But you can see that it started counting down for five meters, so you only get five meters. So even if that did work, um, it just gets past the doorway there, past its five meters, and then it, get, then it just stops working again, so. Okay, so we're back again. Um, so as you can see, it can, it now saves its location so it knows where it is. Um, however, it seems to be very much light driven, which is probably the same scenario as what happened before uh, in the previous firmware versions, is that once the camera went dark, um, it would lose the uh, the position on the, on the charging station where it was, uh, and it would no longer be able to go out. So what Motion have done now in recent firmware updates, and I'm not sure which update actually did this, there's been about four in the last week, um, is that they've now allowed that five meter tolerance for it to leave the charging station and go out. Um, the only time I have experienced that not being able to work was after the power had been turned off on Luba and back on again. You then had to take Luba out uh, into the GNSS signal and then let it redock and it would reset itself. So we had no troubles there with that whatsoever. So like I said earlier, um, that this video is really about correcting what, I'd, uh, what I said was incorrect uh, back then in the previous video, uh, but now it sort of is roughly correct, it's just that the, uh, the distance is a lot different to what I expected it would be. Uh, five metres is a really good start, is all I can say. Um, it allows you to be actually to place that charging station you know, under cover, you know, under a carport, under a, you know, under a roof somewhere, uh, and for the robot to actually travel out and actually get its uh, get the GNSS signal before it uh, before it heads off and starts mowing, gives you about that, that, that five meter tolerance, which is probably now it is essentially from exactly where it leaves the charging station, it actually is five meters because it starts counting from the moment the wheels start moving on on Luba, so you can pretty much measure five meters out from your charging station and that's the distance that Luba will travel. Um, as long as Luba can get that uh, GNSS signal at that location, then you should be fine to have your base station or your charging station uh, installed uh, five meters under cover. So you must remember obviously that if you do install your charge station uh, under cover, that it is using the camera to navigate off there for that first five meters obviously again, um, it needs light. So if it's dark, um, then there's, the, the robot won't leave the charging station. It'll just come off the charger, possibly. It'll, get, it'll go one meter off the charger, and then it will just say, um, loop, but basically it'll say it stopped working, and when you look into the app, it'll say it's got poor positioning or bad positioning. Um, so yeah, so you definitely need to have light. So if you do have your, char your, base, your charging station, I'll get it right one day, guys. Um, charging station, you know, where there's no GNS signal, Luba cannot work, cannot go out, and cannot return home um, at, in the dark or when there's not enough light. And that's really it. So look, that's all I want to do in these videos, guys, in this video today. So it's only a pretty quick one, unusual for me, I know. Um, that just to correct what I'd said was wrong and now that it actually does work, now that we've tested it properly like I should have in the first place, um, uh, that we can see that we can actually get away with uh, a few things now more than what we could. Um, uh, obviously, firmware version 414 has now dropped, um, so I will be taking a video that goes goes through all the new features, and some of them are pretty really good features that have dropped in this new firmware. So I'll go, I'll do another video on that uh, to run through uh, what all the extra features are and how they work. 
Other than that, guys, as always, if you have any questions at all, if you want any questions answered about Luba, hopefully I'll answer them correctly, not like the previous video that was incorrect. Um, uh, just drop us a comment below um, and we'll work on work, work towards getting answers for you on uh, whatever questions you've got. Um, if you're local to Australia and you're looking for answers, email us. Uh, you can email us at sales at robotlawnmowers.com.au. Uh, you can check out our website, plenty of information on our website about in my motion about all the brands that we sell at www.robotlawnmowers.com.au. Uh, and you can check out our socials, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.